Hi everybody, this is Gregor for Personas and today is a bit of a different tutorial. As you might know, I have a hundred tutorials or over a hundred tutorials on our YouTube channel at Personas covering all kinds of Studio One topics. But today I want to go back to the very beginning with Beat Making 101. So I want to show you everything you need to do from the installation process to your first beats in a bit over 10 minutes or so. And my inspiration for this video actually comes from my wife because she said that, um, you know, these tutorials are really great, but often the fundamentals are a little bit skipped or they are way back in the playlist. So it would be kind of good to have a refresher of everything that's important if you're just starting out with Studio One. So the equipment you need, what you need to do to get started and things like that. So without any further ado, I'd say let's get started. And our journey begins here on my.personas.com. This is where we go to install all of the necessary content, Studio One, as well as sound content. Everything that we need to do our production is right here. Okay, so after you've uh, become a Studio One Plus member, you should find Studio One Professional in your products. So you go to my.personas.com and products. And here under software, you're going to find Studio One Professional. And when you click on that, you can download it here right away. And you can run Studio One Professional on macOS, Windows, as well as Linux. And after the installation process has completed, you should start it up. And this is what it's going to look like. As you can see, I've done nothing here. This is just a classic start page of Studio One. And before we get started making some music here, we probably also need to install some additional sound content. And to find that, we go again to my.personas.com. And if you go to the start page, you see that we just released a brand new sample pack, which is Noise Design by Raw Acoustic. And um, this is a particularly interesting pack for me because it's not like an extraordinarily creative piece of kit, but it leaves a lot of space for my own ideas, right? Like the sounds themselves have a very high quality, but the pattern should be in a way that I can still add stuff and remix it to my liking to give it all my own unique touch. And um, this is hopefully what you could do as well. So I think this is a great starting point if you're making a beat in Studio One. And there's two different ways you can install this content, essentially. You could either go straight here to my.personals.com and download the sound set, or you could also do that directly inside of Studio One, which is probably the most convenient option. And to do that, you just go up here where it says Studio One and then Studio One Installation. And inside of Studio One Installation, if you search for raw acoustic, you're going to find these packs right here as part of your um, Studio One Plus membership. And um, yeah, of course, you don't have to use this content, but I think this is a great starting point. And now just tick the box here and click on Install Items. That's literally all that I'm doing right here. So now that we have that bit of content installed, let's maybe take a look at the hardware side of things. What do we need aside from Studio One and a computer and a mouse and a keyboard, obviously, to get started? Well, for example, in my case, I have the Atom and the Atom SQ pad controllers right here from Presonus. They're really nice for working in Studio One because they're so tightly integrated with the software. So I'm going to show you in the setup process in just a moment. Uh, you'll notice I even unplugged them just so you don't think that anything has already happened here. I'm literally starting out with a blank canvas and uh, nothing has been taken care of yet not even the connection of the controllers, so you can follow along. But yeah, you don't have to use Presonus controllers, obviously. You could also use something like this Native Instruments uh, Complete Control here. All of your MIDI keyboards are going to work. It's just that the setup process is the easiest with Presonus own MIDI controllers. So let's take a look. And in my first step here, I'm literally just taking my USB cables that I have uh, prepared here at my desk. That's pretty much all I did. And I'm gonna connect these straight to these MIDI controllers. And after I've done that, I'm going to go here inside of Studio One and uh, click on Setup, 
right? Where you can see my audio interface. That's actually the sound card. Whichever sound card you want to use in Studio One, just go ahead and select that after you clicked on Setup. And then you want to go to External Devices here. And you'll notice that the Atom and Atom SQ that I just plugged in have already been assigned and configured automatically. So you don't have to do anything in order to get started with these. But let's say that I was actually hooking up another MIDI keyboard. Then I would just click here where it says Add and then select maybe like an, an audio oxygen or something like that. You actually find that one as well. But if you have a different one, you just click on new keyboard, you enter the device name, you know, just like that. And you only set the receive from here because you don't want to send back information from Studio One to the MIDI controller, you just want to use the MIDI controller for note input most likely. So in that case, you really just select receive from. And when you click on this drop down menu here, then you should see the device entry that your computer is reporting to Studio One and you should just select that. In my case, I just had the Atom and Atom SQ hooked up so I don't have to do this whole procedure and then I click OK here. All right, and that's pretty much all we need to do. So I have my MIDI controllers hooked up right here. I'm ready to go. And why don't we just click on new together here on the Studio One start page. And you see that there's already a couple of smart templates that we could use to do our very first own beat. So if I scroll down here, I can see there's actually a produce beats template. And uh, it says right here, start building a beat from scratch with pattern using virtual instruments for drum, bass and chords. And uh, that sounds pretty good to me. So Let's just click OK here. Got to change my sample rate though to 48 kilohertz. That has a production reason because I'm currently shooting in this video in 48. And the only other option you might want to take a look at is stretch audio files to tempo. So when this is ticked, then any audio loops that you're pre-auditioning from Studio One's browser, for example, the loops that we downloaded at the very beginning of this tutorial, would always be time stretched or warped uh, to the currently selected project BPM so that everything that you add is always playing in sync and in tempo with everything else. The term BPM that I'm throwing around so casually here stands for beats per minute and is an indicator of how fast your song is. And that is kind of the cornerstone of any songwriting. Before you write anything onto the timeline, you have to determine the tempo of your project. So let me show you how intuitively that can be done in Studio One. So I click here on OK after I've literally just set the sample rate for production reasons. You don't have to worry about it. And I also take stretch audio files to tempo. Hit OK. And you can see that in this very moment, my Atom and Atom SQ have already lit up and they're ready to go. And my favorite way to set the project tempo, which is, like I said, what you have to do first, is you go down here where it says tempo and hold your mouse on this text. You can see how the info box appears. And now you can actually click with your mouse in the tempo that you want to write in. So for example, if I'm thinking, dum, da, tsh, da, da, tsh, that gives me back 110 BPM because this is exactly the interval at which I was clicking the mouse. I can also do that, for example, with the Atom or any controller. All that's required here on the Atom is to just hit the pad labeled tempo in the beat that you want. So dun, da, tsh, dun, da, tsh, would be 122, as you can see. But let's stick with 110 for now because I like to trust my initial instinct here. So the tempo is set, we have an empty canvas in front of us, but how do we start? That's always the hardest thing, right? How do you put that first step? And when dealing with these questions, I would advise you to always stick to one core workflow principle inside of Studio One that is guaranteed to never let you down. It's drag and drop. Drag and drop refers to the motion of holding down the left mouse button and dragging towards the target and trusting that the expected behavior will follow. I'll give you a very simple example of that right now. So if you go, here in this empty new song to the browser inside of Studio One that you find down here, okay? You click on it and you look up. Here you can already see all of the different categories that you will need to build an entire song, mix an entire song, master an entire song, perform an entire song, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Let's say, for example, I want to add an instrument 
you know, like a virtual instrument to start playing. Then I can literally just go to the instruments browser and Studio One comes with some very powerful virtual instruments pre-installed already. For example, the Mai Tai is our virtual analog synthesizer. The Presence is a sample player that also features realistic orchestra sounds, great sounding pianos and things like that. Or Sample One, which actually allows you to turn any sound that you recorded into a playable instrument, which is incredibly exciting. Impact XT would be great for drum samples and hip hop producers. Let's start with the Mai Tai for now because that's the most straightforward. If I want to add that to my song, all I need to do is just pick the Mai Tai and drag that directly into the next available song space. I don't need to drag all the way over here to the track list. None of that. I can literally just drag into the next available song space and it will open right up. And now I can already start playing that right here from my controller. But I noticed something that's quite off. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can certainly feel it. There's like the slightest of delays whenever I hit the note and I don't want that. I want to have as little delay as possible between hitting the key and hearing the result. And here we have to talk about the unavoidable topic of latency in music software. Latency describes the time that it takes for your computer to recognize the key press or pad hit that you make on your MIDI controller, that signal traveling inside of your computer via USB mostly or MIDI and then triggering the instrument that you're playing and that sound being put to the output and out of your speakers again. You want to have that delay as small as humanly possible so that you have no audible delay or even felt delay while playing the instrument on your controller. And the same thing is true if you're an actual, you know, guitarist or vocalist. When you're playing, you don't want to hear your effects chain, uh, you know, come right after. You want that to happen instantaneously. And so you want to try and set the latency as low as you possibly can. But that also also comes with a downside because if the latency is really low, then the computer, the CPU has very little time to solve some very complex equations and the less time it has, the more likely it is to make mistakes and then dropouts can occur and audio will just stop playing and things like that. So this is all set inside of Studio One up here in the preferences under audio setup. And here you can see the device block size. Now, the smaller the block size is, the less samples you have. Typically, it's 64 samples for great recording round trip latencies. The less time your computer has to process the signal. But 64 is always a very good starting point. So my recommendation would be just set it to 64 samples, see how your system behaves. And if you're struggling in bigger sessions, you can just set that device block size up. Important to note is that in Studio one in particular, you can also set a different block size for all of the tracks that don't need to be played or recorded in real time under the processing tab. Here you can actually set a different block size than for monitoring, which can be higher. So for example, if I set dropper protection high, you could see now I have a round trip of 3160 samples for audio, but I could still use 64 samples with a much lower round trip latency for recording. And if you want to know how that works, I have an entire video covering dropper protection. I'm going to link that video right here if you're interested. So this concludes part one of my beat making 101 series. We looked at the entire installation process and we set up our MIDI controllers. We're ready to record our very first beat and the process of that I want to document in part two. So stay tuned.